Hi, I'm Mariana Hartley. And I'm Sean Romo. And we are senior staff archaeologists with Jamestown Rediscovery. And we're standing in front of the iconic uh, Jamestown Church Tower, which is the only above ground standing structure from the 17th century. And we uh, are going to introduce you to a brand new site that we've just opened in the last couple of weeks in front of that church tower. Um, we have avoided this area for many years because of the obvious reason we did not want to block the entrance for our visitors to access the tower and the church ruins. And we know from uh, our excavations there were multiple churches on this site and uh, it'll be interesting to see what we find just outside the front entrance. Okay, if you've followed our excavations in the last uh, couple of years, you will remember that we dug inside the memorial church and investigated some areas um, that the original APVA excavators, including women like Mary Jeffrey Galt, uh, dug back in the late 1890s and early 20th century. And it wasn't until January of 2019 that our team dug inside the church tower, expecting that to have been excavated as well by these women. Um, and then surprise, surprise, they had not dug any of the interior of the tower. So we found that most of it was intact, including the tower's builder's trench, as well as a section of cobblestones and brick rep representing the foundations for the 1617 church where the General Assembly first met in July of 1619. So it was a really amazing find and incredible that no one dug inside the tower. And now with this new excavation, we're hoping that the same thing is true, that no one dug in front of the church tower, uh, avoiding that front entrance. Thankfully, we have several uh, photographs from the early 20th century that show the in, in front of the tower, and they are gonna be an invaluable resource to us as we start to sort out some of the features we're seeing, particularly from that early modern period. Okay, the team has been working for about a week on a brand new unit. Uh, let's go check out and see what they've been finding. So now we're standing right off to the side of our church tower. And one of the things that we found here early on was that some of the uh, features that show up in those old photographs, like the barbed wire fence, are actually leaving remains behind in the unit. So we have this small circular post. That's definitely where some sort of modern fence was. And we can tell based on what's inside of it. You can see it's a jumble of different deposits. Um, that's pretty characteristic of stuff that punches through all the layers that are already here. And this gravel is really going to be associated with modern activity. And we've actually got several of these running through the unit. Now, modern stuff isn't the only thing that we've come up with. We found a lot of historic features, and one of the most interesting ones is a deposit of ash and charcoal, which sits right on top of baked soil. And we've got some of that thermally altered soil right over here. So when we were digging over here, we found that our E horizon, which is this kind of tan sandy soil, it's actually a really, really old topsoil that's lost all its color. Um, our E horizon was a little bit different in patches. And it's been fire reddened in some locations, like right in front of me. Now, this reddening uh, happens whenever you cook earth with extreme heat. Uh, you can actually see it when you take an orange clay and you make it into a brick, it turns red. So the same kind of process is happening here. And the fact that it occurred here at all tells us that there was a relatively large fire in this space. And so we got really interested in that because the biggest fire that we know of that hits Jamestown is 1676 during Bacon's Rebellion when they burn the church here. Now, there are other fires. Um, 
1608. There's a major fire that uh, destroys several buildings inside the fort, and we know of a few subsequent ones. But one of the things that really intrigued us about here is that we're so close to the church tower, it would make sense if we were finding the remains of that event in Bacon's Rebellion. Now, at that time, we think that there may have been a wooden church tower right over here, uh, a precursor to our brick structure. And that wooden tower was probably a holdover from the 1617 timber frame church. By the time of Bacon's Rebellion, 1676, the rest of the church was made out of brick. But we think the tower may have remained wood, just because it was a lot easier to keep reusing the old structure, if it was still sturdy, than to build a new brick church tower. After Bacon's Rebellion, we know that our brick church tower gets built. We think it's somewhere around 1680 or 1690. So the timeline kind of fits. So when we're digging here, one of the things we're trying to figure out is exactly when this burning took place. So we're always going to look to our stratigraphy to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And one of the cool things about this wall is you can actually see where our burning layer is present. All of this dark, nearly black splotchiness is actually ash and charcoal from whatever fire event happened. And if you look real closely, you can see there's a little bit of fire reddening just underneath there. It's not so much on this wall, but it is there in a few other places. Now, we're going to look at what artifacts are present both above and below that burn deposit to try to figure out exactly when it dates to. Uh, because the artifacts that are over top of it should be afterward, the artifacts that are below it should be earlier, and if we get lucky and we find anything in there, maybe that'll give us an exact date. Now, one of the things that is missing from here is what we call Native Horizon, or the original topsoil for the island. And in many places it was scraped away during the construction of Fort Pocahontas in the 1860s. Uh, that was a Civil War fort that was built right on top of the original fort, but it was made out of soil. So they went around scouring the landscape and piling it up 12 feet high. Um, now, the fact that Native Horizon is missing here might suggest that this is actually a little bit later than we think, that it occurred after the Civil War, during the Civil War, after Native Horizon was already scraped away. So one of the things we're going to be trying to figure out is exactly what happened here and in what sequence of events. Now, interestingly, we did a little bit of a test. We were looking at what level we should have found Native Horizon at. And actually, it should have occurred about right here. And you can see that's where there's a break, a distinct break in the soil between kind of smooth brown soil and stuff that's got a few more inclusions in it. That seems to be the ground surface level approximating where Native Horizon would have been and where most of the structures associated with the 1617 and 1639 church were. So we excavated near the south door of the 1639 church, found a portico there that's about the same elevation, and actually the foundations for the 1617 church near where the original ground surface would have been are about right here as well. So. We've got some things to puzzle over with this to try to figure out exactly what's going on. But right now, we're going to take a look at what we've been finding uh, in these soil layers, and maybe we can figure out a little bit more about what's going on here. So the artifacts you see here are all from our current excavation area. And they're actually from three different deposits, um, all of which are over top or cutting through our burned material. Um, so this group of artifacts is from the highest level. That's from our layer B, um, the most recent deposit. This stuff right here is actually from just right on top of that burned deposit and appears to be an intact historic layer. And this is actually from an archeological feature that seems like it cut through the burning. So it's going to post-date it just a little bit. Yeah, so we have quite a mix of things. Um, we're finding things like uh, window panes, so lead that would have held the window panes. Uh, a lot of times we can, um, our conservator can open these up and they'll have dates stamped in them as to the year they were produced. So that can help us with dating certain buildings out here. There's also this uh, neat 
glass raspberry front. Um, so think of it like a, a decorative grip on the outside of the 17th century glasses, uh, drinking glasses out here. So you have those kind of artifacts next to um, you know, landscaping staples that are more modern um, that kind of help us to uh, figure out when that layer was deposited. And then from our uh, more intact layers, the stuff that looks like it is from the historic period overall, uh, we've got these relatively large wine bottle bases. Um, so this is just the bottom, but the wine bottle would have stood a little bit higher than that. Um, we've got some nice German stoneware and a locally made pipe, tobacco pipe. And then these are cool. This is North Devon Scraffito Slipware. So it's made in North Devon, England. And pretty characteristic for this, you can see it's got a white kind of coloration here. That's actually a clay slurry or a slip that's painted on to this kind of red bodied ceramic. And then they would scratch designs into it. And you can kind of see on this one here, a little bit of where they've scratched through. And then they would paint over that with a glaze, giving it this kind of yellow, white and brown color. Yeah, that's really pretty. Yeah. One of the neat things about that piece, and I don't know if you, knew, you saw this, this piece and this piece actually go together. They, uh, they mend into one object. And so you can see that right here. Oh yeah, always nice to have a mend. Yeah. So um, the lab is gonna clean this stuff up for us and maybe they'll be able to tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah, and maybe show us uh, some of the other things that have come out of here and, and what they can tell us about them. Yeah. So we're nearly finished with this test unit, but you can see we've already opened up one right next to it. So we're expecting to find some pretty cool stuff, uh, continuations of what we have been seeing, and maybe some new things. So stay tuned for what we find in this area. And thanks for watching Dig Deeper.